This video will discuss bonding and antibonding orbitals in the hydrogen molecule ion. So as in the previous video, we have our H2 plus model. We have two nuclei, each is a proton, so each is a hydrogen nucleus, and we have a single electron giving us H2 plus. We have uh, the Born-Oppenheimer approximation applied, so our nuclei are fixed at their given location. The value of RAB is constant within a given solution to the electronic Schrodinger equation. We have kinetic energy, which we have for the electron in atomic units minus one half del squared one. We have attraction of electron one to nucleus A minus one over R1A. Attraction of electron one to nucleus B minus one over R1B. And we have the repulsion of the nuclei from each other plus one over RAB which is a constant as that is assumed to be a parameter which is input into our electronic Schrodinger equation. Our trial wave function from the previous video was a 1s function placed at each nucleus, the 1s function being 1 over the square root of pi cubed e to the minus absolute value of r minus the location of that nucleus, so peaking at each nucleus. Trial wave function being a coefficient times 1s on psi a, on nucleus A, plus a coefficient times 1s on nucleus B. We then use the linear variational method, or the matrix Schrodinger equation, to solve for the energies of this system, Hc equals Esc, where H is the Hamiltonian matrix, C is this coefficient vector, Ca, Cb, E is the energy of the system, S is the overlap matrix, where we have the integral over all space of, of the elements of the basis functions, and C being the coefficient vector again. So we solved for the energies by doing the secular determinant, where the determinant of H minus ES equals zero. And now we want to solve for the coefficients. We want to solve for what the wave functions are, what are the molecular orbitals. So we do that by transferring over to the other side here, subtracting uh, ESC from both sides. We can get H minus ES, the matrix, acting on vector C, equals a zero vector, a vector of nothing but zeros. So from the previous video, we have our matrix that we use to solve for the energies, HAA minus E, HAB minus ESAB, HAB minus ESAB, HAA minus E. Uh, the Hamiltonian matrix element AA, Hamiltonian matrix element AB, uh, overlap of these two basis functions, A and B, whereas they were individually assumed to be normalized. So this matrix times this vector, CACB, equals zero. So um, I could say that we would go through and actually solve for the values of these, but there's actually a shortcut here. So we already know from symmetry that CB actually has to be plus or minus CA, because the total electronic density has to be symmetric with respect to the center of this molecule. And that means that our coefficients have to be equal to one another within a sign. Um, so cheating and going ahead and taking that result, I have psi plus and minus for my energy of my two states, so I had a lower energy and a higher energy state, equals C plus minus times A psi A plus or minus psi B. So the wave functions are the same function but with an opposite sign or in each in each case so we have uh, psi a being positive in both cases psi b being positive in one and negative in the other and we need to figure out what coefficient gives us a normalized wave function here so we know that one should equal the overlap of the wave function with itself integrated over all space so that is the, co the coefficient c plus minus times the psi star plus or minus psi star b times uh, c plus minus times psi plus or minus psi b, sorry, psi a in each case here. 1 equals c squared plus or minus, so we have factored out the c plus or minus squared. And we have four distinct cases, psi a star psi a, which is normalized, so that's 1. Uh, psi A star Psi B is SAB, the overlap of A and B. Psi B star Psi A is again the overlap of A and B, SAB. 
Psi B star Psi B is normalized, so that's 1. So the total result is we have 1 plus 1 and plus or minus SAB plus or minus SAB. So we have the coefficient is 2 times 1 plus or minus SAB to the minus 1 half. So yeah, so all of this times C plus minus squared equals 1. So our wave function Psi plus minus equals Psi A plus or minus Psi B over 2 times the or over the square root of 2 times 1 plus or minus the overlap. So if we plot out qualitatively what these look like, I have a yellow bar at the position of each nucleus. So we have two different orbitals. We have what's called a bonding orbital and what's called an anti-bonding orbital. So for the wave function psi plus, we have a value which goes up to nucleus A, it goes up to down to some finite but non-zero value in between the nuclei, then reaches another maximum at nucleus B and then decays away. Alternatively, for the case where you're subtracting psi B, it goes up to a peak at nucleus A, then goes down to zero between the two at, between the two nuclei, then it goes down to a negative peak and then decays back to zero. So what we're interested in is the electron density. So that's for a real function, just psi squared. So psi squared plus goes up, reaches some uh, finite value in between the atoms, and then goes to zero. Psi minus uh, goes up, but then reaches a value of zero somewhere in the middle there. There's actually a, an electron density node in between the two nuclei. So what we see here in psi plus is the positive linear combination leads to accumulation of density between the two atoms. And that is in fact what causes bonding. That's what causes the lowered energy because the density that builds up here interacts strongly with both nuclei, giving us a lower uh, net energy as our result. Alternatively, for psi minus, the antibonding orbital, that depletion of density in the middle pushes the electron density out and away from our nuclei where they're not interacting strongly with the other nucleus. So that depletion of density between there results in no bond. It results in what's called an antibond or antibonding. All right, so I mentioned that the wave function squared or psi star psi is equal to the electron density that we see. So psi star psi in this case would be uh, normalization constant squared, 1 over 2 times 1 plus or minus the overlap. Then in the middle, we have psi, plus, psi a plus or minus psi b squared. So that's psi a squared, the density, of, the density of a hydrogen atom over here, plus psi b squared, the density of a hydrogen atom over here. And the difference from these relative to a hydrogen atom is this plus or minus 2 psi a psi b. So plus or minus 2 times the overlap of these functions. So when this is positive, that's where we get the accumulation and the adding of density in the middle. Where it's negative, that's where you get the depletion and antibonding. So thus, that would give, lead us to acquire the name of psi plus as a bonding orbital and psi minus as an antibonding orbital.